ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Western Racing. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Series 24 of the Spin Master Monster Jam Mainline. I am so excited for today's video because my favorite monster truck, my favorite real-life monster truck of all time is current, well, not of all time, my most favorite monster truck right now is in this set. And I am really excited to finally open my first die cast of the truck. I am really hyped. <sighs> that was a lot to say. It was really hard, not gonna lie. But anyway, yeah, we're taking a look at series 24 today. Series 24 is a very interesting series to me because it's got, it's really weird. The first half of the series is pretty eh, basic, you know, it's nothing too crazy. Then you get to the middle three trucks. The middle three trucks are mind blowing, epic, absolutely amazing. And then the last three trucks are just, Eh, whatever, you know, they're basic. So this will be a very interesting video. I'm just warning you, the first three trucks are boring, the last three trucks are boring, but the middle three trucks are all pretty friggin' solid, not gonna lie, so I'm really, really excited. And I'm not even joking, my favorite truck in Monster Jam right now is actually going to be the middle part of today's video, so we'll get to that. Um, but if you're smart, you can already figure out what that is. So let's get right into it. I'm not wasting any time here. I want to get this video done so I can record the other two. I got Hot Wheels 5-pack and a couple glow-in-the-dark trucks I got to do after this. So, you know, I don't want to waste too much time. kind of want to get that stuff done because, let's admit it, the glow-in-the-dark trucks are cool, right? Like, they're pretty neat. The Hot Wheels ones, they aren't Spin Master glow-in-the-dark by any means because I don't think Spin Master, Spin Master has done glow-in-the-dark trucks. They're just not note, noteworthy. Anyway, what was I talking about? That's right, Monster Trucks. So the first one we're going to look at in today's video is Soldier Fortune Black Ops. We all have seen Soldier Fortune Black Ops before. The only thing this really reminded me is that I actually don't have a, uh, I don't have a normal Soldier Fortune in my collection yet, which is kind of sad. But we got Soldier Fortune Black Ops here, which is the blacked out version of Soldier Fortune. This one, of course, does run in real life. I mean, it used to. It doesn't anymore. It might return in the future. Who knows? I'd like it if it did. Honestly, I like this a lot more than I like the normal Soldier Fortune, just because normal camouflage gets a little boring after a while. This thing's cool. But, uh, yeah, what am I... Uh, I was going to say something about this truck. Oh, yeah, I pretty much have a Soldier Fortune Black Ops in my collection already. This one is just that same exact Soldier Fortune Black Ops, just with a different rim color and no BKT printing. So I'm probably not going to spend too much time talking about this one here but just know that uh i already have done a review on a very similar truck so there it is there got a little bit of stuff we need to look at in today's video um just take my i got a balloon and uh, never mind uh the accessory i do want to go over the spin master accessories the ones that they still do because they were at least unique to each truck in a way whereas the hot wheels ones really aren't for uh soldier fortune black ops here we get a black crush car which looks really solid i like that a lot let us zoom in here and take a look at the soldier fortune black ops so this is the first truck in the set here this is series 24 i do believe yes series 24 here's the first truck you get and it is soldier fortune black ops so pretty sweet little design we got a black body black roll cage black chassis black tires with like dark or gunmetal gray rims. I guess the chassis is gunmetal gray as well. So I guess there are a few differences between this and the other version that I have. Still pretty basic, you know. The only details really on the truck here is Soldier Fortune Black Ops written on the back fender here. I'm pretty sure that is smaller than it usually is. Monster Jam logo there. We got the American flag there all blacked out looking really cool. This side's exactly the same but mirrored, so there's nothing really to talk about here. I did notice that the stars are actually blue on the truck. I never noticed that before. The hood, you got the lights up top with that little cross member right there, the negative space bar, and then right here we have Soldier Fortune Black Ops written on the tailgate with the tail lights. Pretty cool stuff right there. And that is pretty much the entirety of that truck. Not really too much to talk about there because it is just a basic Soldier Fortune Black Ops, but that is the first truck we're gonna look at in today's video. And the second truck that we're gonna look at in today's video is a very interesting one. And I don't know if this is implying something new coming in the future, or this is just, you know, a random idea that Spin Master had. But this next truck, like I said, is very strange. And it is, of course, Son of a Digger, but it's purple. Now, like I said, I don't know what this implies. I don't know if this means that they're gonna do, maybe this is what the 10th anniversary Son of a Digger was supposed to look like, but it never happened. Like, I don't know, I really don't know 
what this is. This is very strange to me. I really, maybe they'll debut this at the world finals this year. Who knows? I, like I said, no idea, but it is in its essence, a purple son of a digger. And I don't know, like I said, I just, I keep repeating myself here, but that is just to drive home the fact that I have no idea why the son of a digger is purple. It is really strange. Just make sure. I don't want to make any mistakes here. The accessory we get is a blue barrel. Pretty cool to get a barrel in a color other than uh, gray. Card insert there. Son of a digger. Pretty cool. All right. Throw the poster off to the side. Let's get to the truck. So purple son of a digger. Huh? Like, this is really, really strange uh, choice, right? Pretty solid, though. I got to say they executed it really well. But I really, again, I don't know why they chose purple. That's such a strange Strange little detail. So we got a purple body, a black roll cage, blue chassis, black tires with purple rims, and yeah, that's pretty much the entirety of that truck right there. Um, the side panel, of course, has the classic graveyard on it. I did do some research to figure out what's going on in this graveyard, so I quit looking like a giant dingling when I try to describe what's going on. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you everything, all right? Point it all out, point blank, and just explain what's going on here, all right? So on this side, we have this is Captain Curse's hood, Red Primer Gravedigger. This is an excavator in the background. Son of a Digger is in the tunnel there. Normal Gravedigger. El Toro Loco. That is a fender off of Blue Thunder. Maximum Destruction. Avengers Hood. The Blue Panel Gravedigger. That is Monster Mutt upside down right there. That truck right there, that little silhouette right there that I'm pointing to is Grandma Gravedigger. So that is pretty much the entirety of what's on the side. And I know that is pretty hard to see, but it is what is going on there. I tried to point it out to the best of my ability. But anyway, Son of a Digger, Scrap, got the Monster Jam logo. It's just pretty much the exact same truck, but purple this time. Purple, if you will. Um, it also, I also noticed that they, the fog that they did is also purple as well. So that's a bit easier to see the fog across the truck, which is pretty interesting. It's actually like the same, but mirrored. Our grill is now purple as well. I did, they didn't do grill printing for this one, but you got the little frame of it with the headlights and the flames. Got the flames coming up the top here. And then on the back or on the, the roof, rather, you have scrap with the flames and the son of a digger logo all in purple there. And yeah, that is the entirety of that truck. Like I said, very strange. I don't know why they decided to do a purple son of a digger. And the video here really doesn't do this justice. This is actually a pretty, really nice color of purple, but it just looks almost like an indigo color on your guys' end. And I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, there you go. That is our second truck, the purple son of a digger. One of the, that probably I'd say the weirdest truck in today's video. I really don't understand why they did a purple son of a digger. It's really strange. Alrighty. Uh, oh, I probably shouldn't be reading that off, and I didn't. The, uh, yeah, my bad. I haven't been reading it off. But the Soldier Fortune Black Ops was from the Legacy Trucks, and the Son of a Digger was also from the Legacy Trucks. This next truck, however, is from See-Through Crew, which is the trucks with all the see-through parts. And it's a very interesting choice. I don't think many were expecting this one to pop up in See-Through Crew, but it is Octanator. Now, I have looked at a couple Octanators before on the channel, but we haven't really gotten one that just looks somewhat normal. I mean, we kind of did with the Nitro Neon ones from uh, 2020, but that's not... You can't, you can't really count the Nitro Neon trucks, can you? Those things hardly count as normal trucks. Well, that sucks. Dang. Oh, well. A little disappointing. I've never had that happen before. Alrighty, let's see what we got here for content on the inside. We got a Maroon Crush car. Very nice. Fits well with my school colors. Not that you guys needed to know that. Octanator logo right there on the nameplate. And then we got ourselves the poster. All righty. So here we go. The Octanator. Um, still curious as to why Octanator does not have a logo on it. I feel like that is something that they should have, you know, gotten figured out by now is, you know, putting a logo on Octanator. Like in Monster Jam Steel Titans 2, Octanator has a logo on it for some reason. But the real, but the normal die cast doesn't. I really wish they'd get that figured out. That'd be cool. But anyway, here it is. Got a maroon body, a maroon chassis, a see-through, uh, almost a see-through tinted chassis, uh, tinted tires, and see-through, almost opaque rims, which look really neat. Um, all of the weight of these trucks is, it's really interesting. The body itself is where all the weight comes from. It is very, very, the even though, these trucks are built roughly the same as all the other trucks. They feel lighter, which is weird. But uh, 
yeah, so we got a Mosh Jam logo here. You got all the suction cups on the tentacles going across the whole thing, actually. One of my favorite details about this truck is how the, t the tentacles really just sprawl out across the truck. It looks really well done. All the little suction cups here and there across the top. We've got the little hole there for the suction cups wrap a little bit across the top. Negative space bar right there. That wouldn't be there on the real truck. And yeah, that is the entirety of that truck. And like I said, it is a see-through crew truck, so you can see through the tires, the rims, and of course the chassis as well. That is all see-through. And I guess really, if you consider it that, the uh, roll cage is see-through as well. It's just a little bit harder to see. But yeah, that is the see-through crew Octonator, our third truck for the video. And as I said, our first three trucks were pretty whatever. I mean, the, the purple grave digger or son of a digger is pretty neat, not gonna lie. But now we're gonna get into the three trucks that I would say make this entire case what it is. Starting with a truck that is a re-release. However, this is my first ever version of this truck, so it's still pretty hype. For the arena favorites, we have from Team Tom Foolery Motorsports, Kraken. I have been wanting to open one of these ever since I saw it was a die cast. And perfect timing too, because series 24, we got Kraken in green. And then the first series of 2024, which I'm pretty sure is series 34, so 10 full series later, we get blue Kraken. So pretty sweet, right? But we're going to look at the normal green Kraken here today. I am really excited to look at this because, as I said, this is my first ever Kraken monster truck. I have been wanting one of these ever since I saw it was a die cast. And we're finally going to, I am finally going to get to open it. You guys are going to watch as I open it and enjoy it like the, the peasants you are. All right. There it is. Oh, so cool. The, but the fact that we... I just realized something. The fact that on the poster, that it goes from uh, Octonator to Kraken is really funny. I didn't even notice that. And the fact that they're even in the same case is really interesting. Um, so the accessory we get for this one is a dirt ramp. Pretty sweet. And then here is the card insert. Kraken. Really nice. Alrighty. Let's get down to business here. Here it is, the Kraken Monster Truck, Nick Pagliarulo's masterpiece, the 3D molded truck. I absolutely love this so much. Ever since I saw this thing in real life, I kind of fell in love with it. It is just so freaking solid and cool. We have a silver body with a green octopus on the back, of course, a, a dark gray roll cage, a bronze, almost golden chassis, black tires, and green rims. So pretty cool looking stuff here. On the side, we have the word Kraken written, uh, the Monster Jam logo on the Kraken itself. And as you can see, the whole design of this truck is it is meant to look like an SUV that is being eaten by the Kraken. Got the head right here with the eyeball, the yellow iris there, and the veins on the eye, which look really freaking solid. Got the tentacles just coming up and wrapping around the truck. Really cool, even some suction cups are 3D bumped. You can feel the bumps there, really solid. And you can see some teeth on the Kraken as well. This side is exactly the same, but mirrored. Just to, Actually, it's more rusty on this side. The uh, SUV itself has rust on it, which looks really good. The front end has a grill and some headlights, albeit covered in rust and absolutely ruined. The hood says Star Creations on it, as all tomfoolery trucks do. Some tentacles. Tentacles going up to the roof of the truck as well with some teeth. See the teeth there? And you got the head of the Kraken, nothing on the back. So there you go, everybody. That is quite possibly one of my favorite independent trucks in the world, the Kraken with Nick Pagliarulo. Pretty crazy. Um, I thought it said Nick Pagliarulo on the window there, but that's just a little bit of rust. So pretty cool. Not a bad one. Or it's the, Yeah, it's really not a bad one. That truck is awesome. I love it. Um... Yeah, albeit, or not even albeit, I don't even know where I'm what I'm trying to say. Dare I say it, I think that Kraken may be better than Octonator. Maybe the other way around, I don't know. It's a tough pick between Kraken and Octonator, but if I'm feeling evil, I might say Octonator. Might take the edge slightly, I don't know, it's tough. It is a tough choice. And speaking of being evil... A lot of people say I'm evil, but hey, that's just why they call me da -da 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 -da. bad company. I can't deny. This is my favorite monster truck currently 
out of every monster truck on planet Earth in real life, this one is my favorite. I love Bad Company. From the paint job to all the variations to John Gordon as a driver, just hands down the best. I love it. And I, uh, I'm kind of going to announce this now. I doubt I'm going to see anybody there. And I'm not going to like advertise myself and be like, hey, this is what I'm going to look like. This is what I'll be wearing. Come say hi to me. No. I am going to be visiting a Monster Jam show in the near future. My first ever Monster Jam show, mind you. It's uh, it's going to be pretty great. I'm not saying where I'm going by any means. I'm just going to say that I'm going to a show. Um, I'm going to tell you the field of trucks, and you might be able to figure out one of the possible locations that I could be at. But uh, I am really excited to go to this event because John Gordon and Bad Company is going to be there, which is awesome. Tom Mintz. Tom Mintz is retiring this year, his final year behind the wheel of Max D, and I am actually going to get to meet him in person, which is something that I don't even think young me could fathom. Like, that is just like a dream come true. I'm going to get to meet the legend himself. It's just freaking nuts. And then on top of that, I'm going to get to see the brand new JCB Digatron in person. Huge news, right? Like, that's great. I like. Uh, and then some other trucks that are going to be there. Black Pearl is going to be there. Kraken is going to be there. Jester, they're all going to be there. I'm pretty sure one of, I can't remember, Lucas Oil Stabilizer will be there. I'm not that big of a fan of that truck though, so that's nothing. Uh, Tyler Menninga and Gravedigger will be there. I would have liked to have met one of the Andersons, but Tyler Menninga, Tyler Menninga is still pretty cool. Like he was the hero of the Superstar Challenge, so you know, you can't really discredit that. Him and Nitro Gravedigger really just wiped the field during that. I don't know. I'm really excited to go see that event. It's going to be flipping amazing. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'm going to take a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, and uh, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I might make an independent video on it. If not, you'll see it in whatever diecast, Monster Jam diecast unboxing comes out after that. So uh, yeah, it'll be, I, it's going to be pretty great and I can't wait to, I'm definitely going to try and make a lot of memories out of that. I'm going to buy a yearbook, my first ever yearbook. I'm definitely going to buy that because I'd love to have like a physical copy of the 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 Spin Master poster that'd be pretty neat and I heard you know I'm going to see just what they're what they got going on for exclusive stuff but apparently they have an exclusive 124 scale stunt truck you can get when you go to the live shows I guess I don't know I don't know I'm it's just all around really exciting and uh, I don't know why I'm still talking about this cuz all I'm really doing is stalling myself from opening my favorite monster truck ever on camera. Whew. All right, let's do this. So I love Bad Company. As I said, recently they just came out with the Orange Bad Company die cast, which uh, got released with Earthshaker in a doubles pack. Coincidentally, it's the only doubles pack in that series that I can't friggin find and it's driving me insane. But yeah, we're going to open the classic black here. This is arguably my favorite version of Bad Company. I love the different versions that he has been doing. The orange one was really cool. Currently on tour, he's running a holographic one so it's like shiny and it has like a rainbow effect going on. it's really neat it is really freaking cool but as i said this one's my favorite i will always love the classic black it just looks so cool but anyway here we go i am so excited we're opening it we're opening it here we go okay the package is being a pain three two one Oh yes. Oh, it's so cool. All right, all right. We're not we're going to wait. We're going to wait on the truck here. This uh is for Arena Favorites as well. Arena Favorites is usually where they do the independent trucks, so that makes sense. Got an orange barrel. Pretty sweet. Got blue and orange barrels, complementary colors. Look at that. And then here is the nameplate for Bad Company. Really cool stuff on there. All right. Here we go. I am I'm so excited. And this is, to all of you viewers, you probably think I'm just being ridiculous right now, but like, you don't understand how hyped I am for this right now. Here it is, Bad Company. So we have a black body with a silver roll cage, black chassis, black tires with white BKT printing and orange rims. Got a little bit of a BKT printing mishap over here, no big deal. But yeah, look at it, it is just beautiful. So we've got the orange, Going across the body here, the Bad Company logo right there with the Monster Jam logo. And you got the signature symbol that they put on this truck. 
which appears to be an eyeball wearing a top hat with wings and then all of the different aces, ace cards behind it. Now, if you look across this whole truck, you can see all sorts of cool stuff like that. You've got the aces, you've got pool balls, you got all sorts of cool stuff. On the negative space bar, you can actually see that the pattern that they use across the whole truck is on the negative space bar. It's just really hard to see. Um, ooh, that'd be cool. If I go to the real life event, I could get John Gordon to sign the negative space bar. That would be sick. Oh my God, I'd never be able to use this though. It would have forever have to sit on a shelf. Dang. Should I do that? Let me know in the comments down below if I should have John Gordon sign the negative space bar on the back of this. That would be sweet, actually. I'd love that. I might do it. Screw you guys. I'm doing it. <laughs> um, so we got the flames here going across the whole truck. Looks pretty sweet. Flip over to the other side. It's the exact same thing, but mirrored, as you can see there. The front end has the grill and the headlights, which looks sweet. On the top, we have the eyeball with the wings, the uh, top hat and the uh, aces over there. Ace of spades, ace of diamonds, ace of hearts, ace of clubs, you already know. The flames going up the hood. The Bad Company logo on the roof there with the same setup with the logo. And then on the back, we got Bad Company with the little emblem and everything and the tail lights. So there you go, everybody. I definitely padded for time on that one a lot, but it was worth it because this is Bad Company, my favorite monster truck in the world right now. It was definitely worth it. So there we go. Excitement over. That is going to be the peak of today's video. Everything is just going to be downhill from here. But before we go completely downhill, we're going to take a, just a small dip downhill first with this next truck, which is for the World Final Series, Gravedigger the Legend. Now, those of you who don't know what this is, this is Gravedigger the Legend with a green roll cage, obviously. But this, uh, I think it was the 35th anniversary Gravedigger Encore. They actually ran this, so this is meant to be from that Encore kind of thing. I don't know. My mom got me this for Christmas. Now, what's really funny about the one that she got me for Christmas is that when it came shipped and she wrapped it and put it in my, you know, present, she didn't, you know, notice that. <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of funny and really convenient for me that I can just open this. Now, the funny thing is, is that I, as you would imagine, curiosity got the best of me and I did open that truck. I have seen it already. So we got a green crush car here. So this one should be quick, even though it's a really cool truck. I have seen it already. Grave Digger the Legend right there for the nameplate. Let's boogie. So here we have the Grave Digger the Legend World Finals, not World Finals 35. That hasn't happened yet. The Grave Digger 35th Anniversary Encore uh, Grave Digger the Legend here. Here's what it looks like. So Grave Digger the Legend, for those of you who don't know, was originally driven by Adam Anderson, and it was a truck that was meant to be a throwback to the blue panel Grave Digger of yore, the Grave Digger number two, as some people call it. And that is essentially what this is, is it's a throwback to that. It's a throwback to that. And during the encore and everything, they made sure you realized that and knew that. So we have a silver body, a green roll cage, a silver chassis, black tires with white BKT printings, silver rims, and uh, neon green bead locks, which look really cool. The side panel says Gravedigger the Legend, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, right there. And the Monster Jam logo. The normal blue panel truck says uh, just Gravedigger up here in this font. It doesn't say the Legend. And then it says uh, Curatuck Grain Co. on the side rather than uh, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, which is pretty neat. I like that a lot. Uh, this side over here is the exact same thing, but mirrored. On the front, we got the headlight and grill set up right here, which looks really cool. Really reminds you of that Dodge D100 delivery van aesthetic. Got a silver stripe going up the hood here with the blue hood. Blue stripe going down the back. And then on the back, we got the delivery doors with the blue stripe there. So that, yeah, that is pretty much in its entirety, the entire truck there. Not a whole lot to talk about. However, this is my first ever Spin Master Grave Digger the Legend, so still pretty cool. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for that one. Nice and simple. And now we're going to get on to two trucks here that I would honestly argue are incredibly boring. And I have no idea why they put them in, why, why Spin Master. This is, again, that whole thing where Spin Master puts stuff out and you're just like, why? We didn't need this. So first up for the crazy creatures, we have Dragon. And we've looked at quite a few dragons on this channel. Like I just looking over at my shelf over there, I can see four dragons that we've unboxed and reviewed on this channel. This will be number five. It's literally just normal dragon with a goofy roll cage setup. Like, I really don't understand why this was made. However, Spin Master, just like every toy company in the world, sometimes releases some small, you know, certain things like this. And I understand this. It's just a little infuriating. 
but sometimes they release trucks like this because they need to do smaller stuff that is more on the cheaper side, stuff that they've already done. They can't always go big and go insane with everything they do. So from time to time, they release stuff like this. And like I said, I understand that. It's just a little annoying. Got a dirt ramp here. Um, yeah, here is the card insert for Dragon. Pretty sweet. Alrighty, here we go. Here is the Crazy Creatures Dragon. We got two almost normal-ish dragons this year from Spin Master, which I don't understand, but that's whatever. But yeah, here you go. Here is the dragon. We've got just the stereotypical green body, green roll cage here, an orange chassis, which looks really strange, black tires with yellow rims. Very strange setup, as I said. But it's dragon. We all know and love dragon. You got the dragon written in the flames, Moss Jam logo, flames in the mouth, got the teeth, the lips, uh, the scales going down the side. You got the wings back here. Pretty cool. Most of this is 3D, by the way, so you can like can rub your finger across it and it makes noise. This side's the exact same, but mirrored. I didn't point out the eye in the window there. We got the cool little V hood there with the little bumps on the nose, the nostrils, bumps going across the back, the really cool horns on the top with the wings, and then nut on the back end there. And yeah, there you go. That is the dragon. Not a whole lot to talk about there. Just nice and quick, get that one done and over with so that way we can move on to some bigger and better things. And when I say bigger and better things, you better believe I'm in bigger and better because, well, I, 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 bigger and better is a bit of an overstatement. This is just slightly bigger and slightly better. We have Crazy Creatures Pirate's Curse, another Crazy Creatures truck here. Again, this is just a normal Pirate's Curse, but at least this one looks somewhat realistic, unlike the, uh, the other one. And here's the thing. I don't know if it's this Pirate's Curse specifically, I don't think it's this Pirate's Curse, but I remember a while back, people were talking about a, a certain Pirate's Curse diecast featuring an independent chassis or something, and they were freaking out about how cool it was. I still don't understand people who go crazy for that stuff. I really don't. This, If this is the one that they're referencing, for example, right? And, you know, it has like, oh, it's literally a Pirate's Curse body on such and such monster truck's chassis. Okay, that's cool and all, but wouldn't it have been better if we would have just got such and such monster truck on such and such chassis? Why'd we get Pirate's Curse on the chassis? It just looks dumb. I'll never understand it. And I know, I have a feeling this isn't the truck that they're referencing, but they did. I think it was the Chase Piece uh, El Toro Loco, if I remember correctly. The Chase Piece El Toro Loco from this year, exactly. I think it was the case directly before this. Had a Chase Piece El Toro Loco for the heavy metal truck. And I remember everybody was freaking out because it had a certain chassis. The The truck looked like it had a certain chassis. And everybody was losing their minds about it. And I'm just sitting there going, okay, again, it's it's nothing. Like, that is so incredibly dumb that that is, I don't know. I, I don't understand it. I, I think my least favorite one was a backwards bob. They did a backwards bob with the most ugly chassis. And people were like, oh, it's the Team Obsession chassis. Okay. But you know what would have been cool is if we would have gotten Obsession with that chassis rather than backwards Bob, you know, a truck that looks good without it, with that chassis. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Got a silver barrel here. Of course, reverting back to defaults as we do here on the channel. And then we've got the Pirate's Curse nameplate. Alrighty, Pirate's Curse, the slightly better looking yet not as cool younger cousin to Captain's Curse. So here it is. We've got the ivory colored body, ivory and black colored body with the silver chassis, black uh, or black chassis, silver roll cage, back tires, and maroon rims. Side panel, of course, has Pirates Curse, Monster Jam logo with all the buttons. You got the shirt here, the hook, the uh, bandana going across the top of the skull, the uh, eye patch band right there. This side's the same thing. You got the buttons, the coat, yada, yada, yada. But this time you've got a silver uh, cutlass in the hand that actually moves back and forth. I did not know that. That's fun. And then in the mouth, you have the dagger, the gold tooth, uh, the eye patch here with the eyeball and the skull. Looks really cool. And then you've got the hat up here with the bandana back here. And then the back end just says Pirate's Curse. So, yeah, that is the uh, Crazy Creatures Pirate's Curse. Again, just a pretty simple Pirate's Curse. I really, I'll be honest, I miss this truck. I really wish they'd bring this truck back in real life. This one in Alien Invasion. I feel like those two trucks did not get enough attention. They should totally bring them back. Now, with that being said, Pirate's Curse and Alien Invasion don't exist in real life anymore. Why are we still getting die casts of them? Like, it, I get it. It's a Feldone truck. 
but why are we still getting die casts of those two trucks if they don't exist anymore? Like, I really, I don't get it. I really don't. But yeah, there you go. Pirates curse everybody. There you go. The final truck for today's video is up next. And it is, of course, the chase piece. I'm going to pause to cut it out of the package once we look at the package. But the chase piece is up next. And as we all know it, I'm sure if you guys had to take a guess, what truck was absent from today's video? We got Gravedigger the Legend, we got Son of a Digger, but we never actually got a normal Gravedigger. So as you would imagine, that is the chase piece. For the true heavy metal trucks, we have Gravedigger. Now the true heavy metal trucks, for those of you who don't remember, are trucks that are just meant to be incredibly heavy. And the way that they do this is literally the only thing that they change on the truck is they give it a metal chassis. Now, normally when you have a truck with a metal chassis, it's because it has a plastic body because plastic bodies such as the see-through bodies and the uh, chrome bodies have to be done on plastic. They can't be done on fiberglass. So they have to give it the, uh, they have to give it the metal chassis there. But to make these things really heavy, they kept the fiberglass body and gave it the metal chassis. Or it's a metal body, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so I'm gonna cut this thing out of the package and I'll be right back. Alrighty, everybody, there is no accessory with this one. They don't do accessories with chase pieces for this year. We got Gravedigger here with the nameplate. Alrighty, here is the truck. I am excited for this one. Well, not really, but I kind of just say I am excited for this one as filler now because if I can't think of any, anything to say, I basically default to that. I don't know if you guys have noticed that or not. And I always say it when it's like least applicable. This is Gravedigger. It's just a normal Gravedigger with some slight differences to it. I, there really is nothing here to be all that excited about. We got a black body, a green roll cage, a metal chassis, black tires with metal like silver rims and white BKT printing. I've also got the engine and the shocks painted in in silver. And yeah, other than that, it's just a normal grave digger. You got the ghost, the logo, the haunted house with the rings around it, the graveyard with all the sponsors, the USHRA logo. This side's exactly the same, but mirrored, like nothing changes. You got the headlights with the green flames wrapping around it, going up the hood, the little stripe right here pointing down towards the middle of the hood. And then if you go up to the top, guess what? You'll, you'll never guess what's up here. Not in a million years. If you're a fan of Monster Jam and you love Gravedigger, I bet you can't even guess what's up here. Green Flames, the Gravedigger logo, grim and bad to the bone. There's your chase piece, everybody. That is it. At least in 2024, the Gravedigger chase piece is Green Ghost. Like, come on, Spin Master. How many just normal Gravediggers have we gotten? For this, you could have changed it up and did something different. We could have Gravedigger number three with a metal chassis. That would have been really freaking cool. But no, we just got a standard Gravedigger. Anyway, that is it for the trucks themselves. Let's get to the turntables.
Well, everybody, there you go. That is the full set of trucks for Series 24. I gotta say, overall, I'd give this case a... Out of 10, I'd give it a solid 7. It's a 7 out of 10 for me, just because we got some pretty good trucks in here. Uh, the Grave Digger, The Legend, Bad Company, The Son of a Digger, and Kraken were all pretty good. The rest of the trucks were either okay things to get, like Pirate's Curse and uh, Pirate's Curse and Soldier Fortune Black Ops were both pretty neat. The other three trucks were just boring, and you know I don't know how I felt about them. But uh, like I always say, when it comes to like the Pirate's Curse and the Soldier Fortune, if the truck at least looks somewhat realistic, I can't give it worse than a 3 out of 10, honestly. Or I can't give it worse than a 5 out of 10. The Soldier Fortune and the Pirate's Curse, I'm going I'm to give them honestly like maybe a 5 or a 6 out of 10, those trucks alone. Because I refuse, if they at least try to make them look realistic, I can, I can kind of give them a good grade. The Octonator, I'd say, was a was a five. Honestly, the Octonator was a five. The Dragon and the Grave Digger were both just disappointing, and I, I really do think they are definitely the bottom of the case for me. But obviously, number one for the case. I think we don't even need to point that out yet. I'm still going to. Bad Company, you know that's friggin' sick. That truck turned out absolutely amazing, and I cannot wait to get my hands on the orange one. But like I said, yeah, when I go to that Monster Jam shell here. I'm going to get it signed. I think I'm going to get Bad Company signed on the negative space bar there by John Gordon, him freaking self. I think that'd be really cool. I don't know if he'll uh, do it, though, because, like, I've never tried putting my signature on a negative space bar on a truck, but uh, I'll ask him and uh, see if he can give it a shot, maybe do his initials or something. I don't know. I'm going to, like I said, I'll take it down there. I'll ask him, but uh, who knows? If it comes back with a signature, you guys will see it, and it'll... I'm putting it on a display case and I'm never going to touch that truck ever again. But anyway, yeah, that's all I got for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Now, see you all in the next diecast unboxing video. Thank you and good night.